What's going on, baseball fans? How are we doing? So I know we're in this lockout right now. It's cold. It's lonely. We all want baseball back. But as soon as this lockout is over, we're going to see all the free agents sign. We're going to see all the trades happen. So in this video, I'm going to go over the 10 moves that I want to see after the lockout. Let's go talk about it. Let's start off with a bang at number 10. I want Carlos Correa to go to the Washington Nationals. I think this would be a heck of a surprise if the Nationals were able to pull off something like this. But you know what? I don't think it sounds all that crazy. You got other teams out there like the Cubs who are looking to uh, bring in Carlos Correa. It looks like the years are the only thing that's holding that back. The Yankees have been in the mix. Even the Red Sox have been in the mix at one point. I still think the Astros are a definite possibility for Carlos Correa, but I think a surprise team could emerge for Carlos Correa, and I think a team like the Washington Nationals could come out of nowhere and offer him a deal. They have a good relationship with Scott Boris. Carlos Correa is now represented by Scott Boris. He had a great season last year, and the Nationals, they could use a shortstop. If we go take a look at uh, right now what they have for shortstop projected on fan graphs, they have Alcides Escobar, who did well in around 75 games last year, but this guy's 35 years old. Is this the guy you want to count on You know, for the shortstop position? I think Carlos Correa would be awesome for the Nationals if you can get Juan Soto locked up as well to have those two guys alongside each other in the lineup for years to come. I think that would be awesome. If we go take a look at the payroll, as of right now, the Nationals payroll, the luxury tax payroll is currently sitting at $136 million. I mean, hey, even if you get uh, Juan Soto locked up to a decent deal, bring in Carlos Correa for around $30 million. Yeah, you're looking at a lot of money for two guys, but they have the room to get it done. You know, Steven Strasburg going to be paying him a good amount of money for the next, you know, how many years now. But to me, I think the Nationals still have a pretty good roster. I really do like their team. They have a catcher of the future in Kyber Ruiz. I think the starting pitching definitely could use an upgrade as well. Maybe you could go out there and go get someone like Carlos Rodon, who is also represented by Scott Boris. I think with the Nationals, I don't think they're a bad-looking team. I definitely think they need some holes to fill. But I think Carlos Correa would fill a huge hole. And if you take a look here, I mean, you do have Brady House, but he's far away. He just got drafted. You got Armando Cruz, but he's not going to be around in the major leagues if he ever makes it there uh, for a long time. He's only 18 years old you don't really have a shortstop that can really you know take the mantle uh especially like a young guy you do have someone like a Luis Garcia but to me I feel like he's more of a projectable second baseman I think Carlos Correa would be awesome for the Washington Nationals coming in at number nine I think the San Francisco Giants should sign Seiya Suzuki I think he would be a great fit for the Giants I've done a video on the teams that I think are the best fits for Seiya Suzuki you can see that video up here somewhere but Seiya Suzuki I mean obviously we don't know what he's going to be but in Japan put up really good numbers last year uh, for the Hiroshima Carp had a 317 batting average of 433 on base percentage a 639 slugging 38 homers 88 RBIs a really good stat line if we go take a look at fan graphs as of right now the zips projections for him uh hitting around maybe 280 a 350 on base a 469 slugging you know 20 homers you know something around there I think that that sounds about right who knows maybe he could even be better than that uh Seiya Suzuki there's a lot of promise in him only 27 years old but for the San Francisco Giants they lost a couple of bats they lost Chris Bryant they lost Buster Posey I think someone like Seiya Suzuki would be a good risk worth taking. He's not going to be one of these, you know, high price free agents like a Carlos Correa or a Chris Bryant. I think he kind of fits right into that price range like the, that the Giants like to spend. Lamont Wade Jr., I think he had a good role off of the bench last year. Let's keep that going. Seiya Suzuki in left field, I think it makes a ton of sense. At number eight, I think the Philadelphia Phillies should sign Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber was awesome for my Red Sox last year after they traded for him at the trade deadline overall last year he hit 266 32 homers 71 rbis a 374 on base a 554 slugging he was the real deal for the red sox came up big in the postseason a couple of times i think he would be a great fit for the philadelphia phillies if you go take a look right now they have adam hazley for left field but big thing universal dh that's looking like that's going to be a thing in the national league this year uh, to me, Kyle Schwarber makes a ton of sense, but not just because of the fact that he you know, could maybe be a DH here for the Phillies, but 
The Phillies, at the top of their order last year, were not very strong. They were one of the worst teams at the top of the order in the first and second spots. They ranked very low in batting average. They ranked very low in on-base percentage. Kyle Schwarber is a very good hitter out of the number two spot. He can bat leadoff here and there, too. He's kind of like a an enigma of a leadoff hitter. He's not really going to give you speed like the classic leadoff hitter, but he's going to give you on base percentage and that is what the Phillies need they need a guy that's going to set the table for them for guys like Bryce Harper you know JT Real Muto maybe even Alec Baum if he ends up becoming something Kyle Schwarber I think for the top of the Phillies lineup makes a ton of sense at number seven I think the New York Yankees should trade Luke Voigt to the Colorado Rockies Luke Voigt He's had, a, he's had some bad luck in the last couple of years with health. Last year, wasn't really able to get a lot of stuff going uh, going on at the plate. Only hit 239 overall, 11 home runs, 35 RBIs, a 328 on base, overall 764 OPS. But Luke Voigt has shown in the past when he's healthy, he can really do some damage. In that short season in 2020, led the major leagues in home runs with 22. I mean, overall had a pretty good year, a 948 OPS. I mean, it was only over 56 games, but overall that, those are really good numbers over a short season. When he's healthy, he's been able to put up good numbers. Uh, had a 378 on base with 21 homers over 118 games in 2019. I think the, with the Yankees, though, it looks like they're ready to move on from uh, from Luke Voigt. It looks like they, they had a trade in the works at the trade deadline with Luke Voigt, but that team who was undisclosed ended up pulling out of the trade. He's been in trade rumors this offseason. It was looking like the Brewers were maybe uh, giving the Yankees a call about him. I think Luke Voigt would be a really good fit for the Colorado Rockies, especially if you're going to have that universal DH, I think Luke Voigt, to me, hey, get this guy off of the field. Maybe play out in the field a little bit. Be a part-time uh, fielder out there, but give him the, as many at-bats as you can at the DH spot. As of right now, you got Charlie Blackman projected for the DH spot, but to me, Charlie Blackman, he can just go back out in the outfield. Luke Voigt, <clears throat> he can be your DH. And to me, I know a lot of people might disagree with this, but I actually think the Rockies have a pretty decent team they, they actually were better than what most people thought they were going to be last year they had the best defense overall last year uh the Rockies I thought were pretty underrated in some aspects last year the rotation isn't looking all that bad with Marquez Freeland was when he was healthy last year he looked okay uh um Senzatella last year was pretty decent for the most part Austin Gomber you know didn't have a lot of innings last year did miss some starts but I, I feel like the Rockies you know they got a couple of good arms in this bullpen as well I don't think the Rockies are looking all that bad why not try and just bump this lineup up a little bit you know you, you traded away Nolan Arenado but hey you can bring in Luke Voigt on the cheap this can be a decent bat to bring in. And I think if you have a, a healthy Luke Voigt in this lineup in Coors Field, I mean, this is not a bad looking lineup with guys like Ryan McMahon, CJ Crone, maybe Brendan Rogers can finally emerge as a guy. Uh, to me, I think Luke Voigt would be really good for the Colorado Rockies. And here's a trade I have set up here. For Luke Voigt, you're not seeing a lot of value at the moment for him, only around $3 million worth of value. So in this trade for the Yankees, I have them getting... A couple of prospects in return. But the main piece I have them getting back is Jonathan Daza, who I think actually could help out the Yankees a little bit. This is a guy in 107 games last year, hit 282, the 332 on base. Not a big time slugging percentage, but I don't think that's what the Yankees need. They have a lot of bats out there already who, guys that can really bang with Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stan. There's a lot of bats there, but with Jonathan Daza, he's going to bring you some speed. He's going to bring you some decent base running. Um, I mean, to me, Jonathan Daza, this is a guy, he can be a fourth outfielder kind of a guy. I really think Daza would be a really good fit for the Yankees. And I think Luke Voigt would be, if healthy, a great fit for the Colorado Rockies. And this would open up, you know, a roster spot for the Yankees to go out and go get someone like Freddie Freeman or bring back Anthony Rizzo. Up next, I think the Oakland Athletics should trade Sean Manaya to the New York Mets. Sean Manaya for the New York Mets, to me, is just such a perfect fit. The New York Mets, hey, they have been adding guys left and right this offseason. Max Scherzer, just to start it off, not a big deal if you ask me. But then bringing in guys like Starling Marte, Eduardo Escobar, Mark Canna. I mean, they have made some really nice additions here. However, with the starting pitching, the one thing that I am noticing right away, they don't have a lefty in this rotation. Do you need a lefty necessarily? No, but I always think it's nice to have a lefty in that rotation. 
But I think overall, the Mets need some starting pitching depth. Jacob DeGrom obviously was the best pitcher on the planet last year when he was on the mound, but we ended up missing pretty much all of the second half last year with Max Scherzer. Yes, he's one of the best arms in the game, but at the end of the day, he's almost 38 years old. I still think he's going to be okay for the next couple of years. But you never know with Max Scherzer. Had some stuff going on. He always seems to have something nagging going on. Had the dead arm at the end of the year last year. Um, to me, I think, you know, with Taewon Walker as well, bad second half, Carlos Carrasco, that is a bit of a health risk as well. Um, he just had a procedure done on his elbow this offseason. How is he going to be? I think someone like Sean Manaya, over 32 starts last year, a 3.91 ERA, 194 strikeouts over the 179 innings, uh, a FIP of 3.66. I think Sean Manaya with the Oakland A's looking to unload Sean Maniah just makes a lot of sense here. And here's a trade that I have put together. Uh, Sean Maniah worth around $18.5 million worth of value right now. And going back to the A's, just a simple package here. We could do someone like a JT Ginn and uh, Ramirez, an outfield prospect, going back to the A's. I think something like that could make some sense. Do you have to use these prospects necessarily? No. The Mets, I don't think they're in a place right now to be going after a guy like a Luis Castillo. He's going to cost a lot more. Um, even someone like Sonny Gray is going to cost a little bit more too because he's under some more control. And obviously Sonny Gray is pretty solid. Sean Manai, he's got the one year left but before free agency. So he's not going to have as much of a value. And he's had some you know injury stuff in the past too, some health stuff. So I think, you know, if you don't necessarily want to do these two guys, you don't have to. Uh, Mets fans, let me know. Would you want to do something like that for Sean Maniah? I would think also if you can get Sean Maniah locked up to an extension, I think that would be really good too. But overall, I think Sean Maniah would be a great addition for this Mets rotation in 2022. At number five, I think the Boston Red Sox should sign Trevor Story. I would absolutely love Trevor Story on the Red Sox for next year. I think there is a fit for him. If you go take a look at the Red Sox right now, you're probably thinking, well, they got Xander Bogart's a shortstop. Well, with Trevor Story, there seems to be uh, some scouts out there that think he's more, he's better off for second base because supposedly there were some problems with his elbow last year, but he all he still has excellent range out there. Trevor Story, one of the best defensive shortstops out there, but some of his throws last year were a little wonky. So scouts think that he could be maybe better off at second base and for the Red Sox absolutely that can work out you got Kike Hernandez projected for second base right now but you can move him back out to the outfield uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. ends up becoming your fourth outfielder in that case um, to me and then you also just traded away Hunter Renfro where that was a right-handed power bat with Trevor Story this is a guy where last year it wasn't his best season overall you know the batting average was a little down the on base was a little down but the slugging was still respectable an 800 ops overall 24 home runs you gotta remember with trevor story as well he's a pull hitter and i think his bat would fit really well at Fenway Park with that green monster. I think you could see Trevor Story have a really good year with the Red Sox. I think, honestly, get him signed up to a one-year deal. The Red Sox have some infielders in their system coming up where maybe they could be ready in the next couple of years. Nick York, I mean, I know he's still very far away, but looked really good last year. Uh, there, you know, you got Jeter Downs down there as well. So I don't necessarily think you need to sign Trevor Story to a long-term deal. I think, honestly, with Trevor Story, again, didn't have a, a, a prototypical Trevor Story year last year to where maybe he takes the route of what Marcus Semyon did uh, with the Blue Jays last year, signed a one-year deal. He, bet, he, took, uh, he took a chance on himself, and look at the deal that he got with the Texas Rangers. But I could also see uh, a similarity that the Red Sox have actually done in the past as well. They did this with Adrian Beltre uh, back in 2010. Adrian Beltre wasn't coming off of a, a great career, uh, or a great uh, four-year stint with the Seattle Mariners. He took a one-year deal with the Red Sox, ended up going to the Rangers, and hey, look at, look at what Adrian Beltre did for the rest of his career. I think Trevor Story, a one-year deal with the Red Sox, I think that would be really good for both sides. It helps out the Red Sox this year, gives them a right-handed bat. Trevor Story, he can reestablish his value. I think it makes sense for both sides. Coming in at number four, I want Freddie Freeman to re-sign with the Atlanta Braves. This one is just obvious to me. This guy's been with the Atlanta Braves for his whole career, and I think he needs to stay Stay there for the rest of his career. Not very often you see guys stay with one team or with one organization for their entire career. And I think Freddie Freeman should be the guy to do it next.
next. I mean, Freddie Freeman, still one of the best first baseman in the game, if not one of the best players in the game. Uh, hit 300 last year, had 31 homers, 83 RBIs, almost a 400 on base percentage. Are you kidding me? 503 slugging, just under a 900 OPS. He ranked fifth in Fangraph's war last year among first basemen. Freddie Freeman, it's just a no-brainer to have him go back to the Atlanta Braves. And why not? The Atlanta Braves... For, I mean, for him, this is a guy who could still win another championship. I mean, this team is still really good coming off of a World Series championship. It, Marcelo Zuna, if you are going to have that universal DH next year, yes, I understand he had his issues this year. But Marcelo Zuna in 2020 at the designated hitter position, he was phenomenal in that position. This Braves team could be really good again next year. I mean, you still got a really good pitching staff. I mean, there's still Mike Soroka could end up coming back too. Still a good looking bullpen. You got some depth in that farm system. This Braves team is still very dangerous, and I think they could easily uh, make it back to the World Series next year. Freddie Freeman, I think it just makes sense for both sides. I mean, Freddie Freeman, he, he's to me, he has a chance to win another World Series at some point. Uh, I just think it makes too much sense for both sides. Could Freddie Freeman, you know, may maybe the Braves have a set value on him and maybe they don't want to go over that. The Braves, they tend to, uh, they tend not to just throw money out there. So I could maybe see that happening. Could he end up going to a team like the Yankees? Could he end up going to the Dodgers? Uh, I think Freddie Freeman, ultimately though, the best fit for him is right at home with the Atlanta Braves. At number three, I want the Texas Rangers to sign Clayton Kershaw. I know Clayton Kershaw, we're talking about Freddie Freeman here, you know, staying with the Atlanta Braves for, the, for his whole career. But I think this is a case where if a guy were to move on, this seems to make the most sense to me. Why? Well, Clayton Kershaw, he's had some problems, you know, staying on the field with, you know, because of health in the last few years. Uh, to me, I think Clayton Kershaw, though, this is a guy he can still go 22 starts last year. Uh, according to reports, it's looking like he's good to go for 2022. And I think the Texas Rangers, ultimately, could he go back to the Dodgers? Yeah, absolutely, he could. But I think a team, an organization like the Texas Rangers, where he is originally from, he's uh, from the state of Texas, went to high school there. I think Clayton Kershaw, a, a team like the Rangers, I think they're just going to want him more. I think they want to bring in Clayton Kershaw. They've been connected to Kershaw this offseason. To me, I think they have more of a need for him, and I think they would be willing to give him more money than the Dodgers would. I think the Dodgers, they would welcome him back, but I think it would only be at a set value. I think for the Texas Rangers, I think they'd be willing to give a little bit more for Clayton Kershaw, not just because of his ability. Obviously, he is a good pitcher when, he's, when he is healthy, but I think what he brings to the Rangers is much more than his ability. I think what he brings to the the Rangers is just his leadership. He's going to really help out with these young guys here. He's going to help improve the culture, and that's what the Texas Rangers have wanted to do this offseason, bringing Corey Seager, bringing Marcus Semyon. They're trying to slowly rebuild that farm system. They're trying to build a winning organization. They're trying to bring in winning players. And to me, Clayton Kershaw, you know, just brought in Corey Seager, teammate. Uh, he has the connection with Chris Woodward. Chris Woodward was with the Dodgers not too long ago. There's that connection there. I think it just makes a lot of sense to me. I like John Gray, but that to me is not my opening day starter. I want Clayton Kershaw as the opening day starter for the Texas Rangers. Uh, to me, it just makes a lot of sense. At number two, I want the LA Dodgers to trade for Matt Olson. So we were talking about Freddie Freeman earlier, right? Going back to the Braves. So there has been those talks of maybe if Freddie Freeman goes to a team like the Dodgers, maybe the Braves can go after Matt Olson. Well, to me, I want Freddie Freeman to go back to the Braves and why couldn't the Dodgers just go after someone like Matt Olson? Hey, it's staying in the state of California. Why not go after a bat like this? Well, I'll get into the, a little more details here in a second. As for Matt Olson, obviously one of the better first basemen in the game. Last year was very good. It hit 271, 39 homers, 111 RBIs, a 371 on base, a 911 OPS total. Matt Olson also good defensively at first base too. Why not go after Matt Olson if you're the Dodgers? And, you know, you lost Corey Seager, a left-handed bat. Well, here you go. Here's a power-hitting bat and Matt Olson that fit right there in your lineup. If we go take a look here, as of right now, you got Max Muncy at first, but Max Muncy, he can move over at another position. You can move him over to second base, um, especially with the universal DH now. You got more flexibility there. I think with Matt Olson, he slides in perfectly for the Dodgers. But you know why I think Matt Olson makes sense for the Dodgers? Because the Dodgers... 
they got the prospects to get it done. The Dodgers are, very, like, they're not just a good team, but they're a good, or a good organization. They're a dangerous team, but they're dangerous when it comes to trades, and they have the prospects to get it done. I have a trade put together here, headlining the package going back to the A's. I have Gavin Lux. Why not? The A's, they could use some infielders. Gavin Lux is still in the pre-arbitration stages where you're not having to pay him a lot of money. Let's see if maybe a change of scenery can get him going with Oakland. You got some other prospects here. We got Andy Pages, Clayton Beater, and shortstop prospect going blank on the first name here jacob amaya the number 14 prospect so overall you'd be giving up gavin lux you'd be giving up the number five prospect andy pages the number nine prospect clayton beater and the number 14 prospect jacob amaya these are also the rankings for mlb pipeline can't remember off the top of my head what the rankings are at baseball america and fangrass but to me seems like a reasonable package for the a's to get back you're getting gavin lux a good young player in the game andy pages and then with the Dodgers, you're getting a very good first baseman He's going to add some thump to that lineup. You're basically replacing Corey Seager at that point. You could be even maybe getting a better bat than Corey Seager, arguably. I think Matt Olson would be awesome for the Dodgers. But coming in at number one, I want the Seattle Mariners to sign Chris Bryant. This, to me, is the one deal that I want to have happen. Chris Bryant with the Seattle Mariners just makes so much sense to me. He just fits so perfectly for the Seattle Mariners. Chris Bryant, uh, last year with the Cubs and then getting traded to the Giants, ended up having a bit of a bounce back year. Uh, overall, hit 265, 25 homers, 73 RBIs, a 353 on base, a 481 slugging, 835 OPS total. But Chris Bryant, to me, what where he is really valuable is he can play multiple positions. He can play third base. He can go in the outfield. He can go play some first base as well. Chris Bryant has that versatility that I think would fit really well with the Seattle Mariners. So if we go take a look here, you got a lot of guys here that are looking to get some playing time. You got maybe you could say a bit of a log jam here. Right now, I would say overall, if you could get Chris Bryant, you could put him at third, Toro, you could move him over maybe to second. You could put Frazier out and left. Now it depends what do you want to do with Jake Fraley. You know, a bit of an up and down year last year. He was hurt, did well when he came back, then he got COVID, wasn't really the same after that. I think overall. Chris Bryant, but he just fits and he has the versatility to make it work. I, I just think it's a no brainer for me to bring Chris Bryant to Seattle. But overall, what I think Chris Bryant, the yes, the bat, the versatility, but he brings that winning attitude, the winning culture, winning a World Series with the Chicago Cubs, help end that drought. Can he help end that drought with the Mariners? Can he finally help them get back to the postseason? I, I, to me, he just checks off a lot of boxes for the Mariners, and he is the number one move. This is the number one move that I want to see overall. So those are the moves that I want to see after the lockout. Tell me what you think down below. Do you agree with any of these? Do you disagree with any of these? Do you have some ideas of your own? Let me know down below in the comments. But that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.